this is an entire 3D world, and 3D is confusing because people think, oh, that means you're putting on 3D glasses when you see it. No, it's not the stereoscopic 3D. We're talking about that everything is being modeled in three dimensions, and you can see wherever you want to. You can put cameras wherever you want to around your characters. You can have the characters move in any environments that you'd like them, and that is something that is truly unique. That is something that has not been done, certainly at this level, certainly not for the film community. What we're making are everything that either the character is going to interact with or important things that pertain to the story. So for example, the character's house, which is gonna be in the foreground of your, um, of your scene, that's something that has to be built. But if you're looking at things like mountains in the background, skies, you know, other buildings, for example, like you know, a cityscape, that stuff can generally just be painted or done like as a matte painting. Essentially, the environment the character walks around, so that, that way it helps us plot you know, where he's gonna go, how he's gonna interact with people in there, and just everything in the, in the environment. In a way, animators are just like actors. Um, what they're doing is they are, instead of performing themselves in front of a camera, they're funneling that performance through a, a, an artificial character. It takes a sense of timing, it takes a sense of uh, delivery. You, you kind of have to understand what your character is thinking and feeling when they're doing what they're doing. Modeling is the biggest thing that I've been been doing here, building sets, building the props in the sets, the bookcases, books, chairs. I mean, if you watch Phil sitting there making those lions, where do you think those lions came from? They were just a picture that he plopped on there? You think he just bought a lion and dumped it in there? No. He had, to, for, to make it organic and feel natural in the set that we had, he built that lion. That's like all those little pieces that come out of the lion's mane, or I think that's what it's called. He did all that. And look, likewise for everything. That's what all these guys did. You can't imagine Bakia making that bicycle that Lester is uh, riding in the beginning just so it should fit the character perfectly and work well in tandem with his legs. It's an enormous, enormous amount of work. I think anybody coming from any sort of film background would really uh, love the whole 3D process um, because any, any type of camera you know, limitations, any type of equipment limitations, lighting, whatever, um, that you may worry about on a live action shoot, it's all... It's all there for you in, in 3D. I mean, 20 cameras, 20 lights, whatever you want, you can, you can put it in there and just go crazy with it. You know, if you're, if you're on a film shoot, if you want to do a dolly shot, you need specific equipment. If you want to do like a crane shot, you need specific equipment. Um, in, in 3D, all you have to do is just put the camera there, move it the way you want to move it, do what you want to do with it, and, and it's done. After you finish all the animation and you've done something and you've set it all up, you don't actually make a video. You make a series of instructions for a computer, and then the computer has to what's called render and create that animation. The computer takes several minutes to create a frame of animation. It creates a 3D picture. That picture is one frame. We're doing, I believe, this film is 24 frames per second, and it takes... 60 seconds in a minute, and if we're talking about an hour-long film, do the math, it's a big number. And I think I ran the numbers, it would take one computer about a month to produce the film, which is untenable. You can't ever produce it and then say, hey, let's make these changes. You have to be able to see it along the way. Because there is so much animation with this project, this, this is going to be over an hour long, and this is by far the most that we have ever had to render out. We could not do this all on our given workstations. So we had to get a render farm, which is just a series of computers that we can just run these files through and they just spit out fr render rendered frames. When we submit a task to the render farm, basically it divides up that whole image sequence that needs to be rendered among all the computers on the render farm. Each one takes one frame and it just cranks away at it until it's done rendering. So every two minutes, each computer finishes a frame, which is vastly faster than just having one computer rendering out each individual frame one at a time. It gets divided over anywhere from 20 to 30 computers.